welcome back to the channel again today we're back on GT Sport and we're back with the FIA Manufacturers Championship it's round number two season three obviously the most important season and this is the first time driving the group three car the Mercedes AMG on the new tyre model in race conditions so qualifying obviously I did the strategy of doing an out lap pitting and obviously doing two qualifying laps this was my first lap everything started going reasonably well on this lap um, we're gonna fast forward some of it um, just to get it to the end of the lap because it was going really smoothly everything was going well I was hooking up all the corners it was one of them laps where everything was going pretty much spot on you can see you know every apex I was hitting we're just gonna fast forward this all the way to the end and just show you know purple sectors were coming up I knew I was on a good lap everything going right and then um, just come to the final sector and that really frustrating fast left hand corner where you've got to hook the apex up I slightly missed the apex on that corner and um, missed out on a, a quite a big amount of time. You know, just this is I just want to highlight, you know, little errors, just how much time you can lose by these little errors. Because on my second lap, I did this a little bit better. And I'm just going to show you now as as I entered this corner, I hesitated on the turn in and took too much off in the end. And couldn't carry the speed. You can see down to 123 miles per hour. You want to be carrying a constant 130 miles per hour around that corner and. Um, messed the lap up a bit and unfortunately I was really hoping that I'd pick up that stream of Pumpunku in front of me to help me out for the next lap and obviously down this straight as I go over the line um, still managed the 209.4 first lap with obviously heavy fuel so it wasn't bad it put me quite high up on the grid so coming to the end of this lap I drove it very scruffy on the first section this time so totally the opposite half a second down at this point to the previous lap because it just wasn't going well I was trying to overdrive to pick up that slipstream and it, it just tends to happen if you push too hard you end up driving scruffier but not as smooth but watch the difference now as we go through the last sector just how much time I lost by a simple error on one corner it just this shows you how important this corner is because going through the final sector before that point we're half as half a second down on our previous lap but this time we totally I totally hooked that corner up you can see carrying so much more speed right on the limit on the exit there and then hit my braking point reasonably well there getting close to the apex on the power nice and early and actually ran a little bit wide there maybe could have done that a bit cleaner but still carried good speed and look how much time I gained to the finishing line pretty much matched the time of the previous lap just half a second gained just on that one sector so frustrating it shows me I could have been in the late 208s with um, obviously heavy fuel still and probably been about P2 or P3 um, but unfortunately I didn't hook it up and still though starting P7 so I was, happy. I was actually really happy with that because I wasn't expecting much from this I didn't practice too much and um, I was reasonably happy with the lap obviously the first lap was going so well it's just a bit frustrating when you see how much time you could have gained so we're going to start this action watching the replay camera I've got the onboard cockpit camera in that top right hand corner for you to have a little look at um, obviously on board the Mercedes obviously I don't use that when I'm playing on the gameplay I just thought it'd be nice just to look at that at the start so obviously a standing start I managed to get a really good start I managed to get in two places TRL Manu and um, the Renault in front of me got poor starts and that really gave me a, a boost up the inside managed to get two places straight away at the start so into P5 from the start from p7 so a great start and everyone got through that first corner really clean no incidents uh, really nice driving to see everyone being respectful and clean obviously don't want to make too many mistakes as the oscaro driver just up ahead of me makes a move um, past day road and i think he comes into contact with the with pomponku in the citroen and he spins out and that puts me up in another position so into p4 from the start had a little run on the outside of tx3 day road However, there was no point trying to go around the outside of that corner. I just took back in, back into his slipstream and just trying to hold on to his car. So riding on board now as I'm following Day Road, just trying to pick up on that slipstream. You see short shifting while I'm behind him, saving the fuel, you know, so important to do because um, that Nissan's faster than my Mercedes down the straight. So while that car's that close to me, real benefit for me to just sit behind that and just let him carry me down these straights you're going to see that Renault's going to really struggle as well because he's not as close to myself behind me so the Renault struggles on straight line speed a bit like the Mercedes still you know the Mercedes has had that 1% power boost the AMG GT3 but it's just still not enough to compare it to other cars which we'll see further on in the race in terms of straight line speed but being this close to slipstream really helped me out because I'm short shifting and pulling away from that Renault the Renault is struggling to stay with myself here now and I'm just trying to see if I can just Hold on to this to let, uh, these groups of cars, these group of cars in front of me. You know, P4 after lap one, a great start, pretty much the best start I could have asked for. As TRL Manu behind me tries to make a move on the Renault, 
Um, looks like that doesn't work out too for him there. But looking back on myself now through this section of the track, just again trying to hold on to day road and this real tricky corner that I just don't like to risk it too much on that. In the Mercedes, it's, it's not the best type of corner for the Mercedes. It's not obviously um, the best car for fast corners, but it's, it's fairly stable. So overall, really impressed with the Mercedes um, feel of this track. It wasn't the best, but it was um, definitely enjoyable to drive and it felt solid it felt like a solid car for race conditions especially with the tire wear so we're going to jump on board with the onboard camera now as obviously from the cockpit view i thought i'd mix up the camera angles for this video today i did in a new one um, just to have a bit more variety to these videos and show you the onboard obviously this is the view i used to race on um, got rid of the borders as well from it so you don't see them horrible borders um, just for this onboard i can't do it on the tv replay cameras because when you're using the TV replay cameras, it just shrinks it too much and you miss out too much of the action. But on the onboard cockpit camera, it doesn't look too bad. As you can see there, they run just up ahead, hooking them corners up. I'm just trying to follow in his slipstream and stay with him as much as possible, just trying to make sure I hit them apexes of the corners and short shifting. You can hear it on the engine, short shifting it a little bit just to save that fuel. This track was such an important thing to do. Um, obviously, a lot of straights and the Mercedes not being the most powerful car, it was a good idea for me to use the ability of their slipstream and just save some fuel while I'm behind them. This corner Mercedes is very strong on, and I found the Mercedes probably a little bit stronger than the Nissan on that corner. However, coming through to this fast right-hand corner, the Mercedes just understeered a little bit more than the other cars. You can see I have to take different lines through there to the other cars. I have to take a wider entry point then tying it in on the apex to get make sure I don't come too close to the barrier on the left-hand side. So, interesting to see different ways different cars were taking it. You, you tended to find like the RSO one was able to take a really fast line, and you'll see a different line that um, Derek later on in the race takes um, compared to myself also um, in the VGT. Um, a car that um, insane speed. You're going to see how fast that car is later on in this race. As you see it just up ahead, the Citroen makes a little error, just about manages to save the car. And I think he picked up a penalty there as he ran a little bit wide. Um, a corner that is so easy to make a mistake on, as now I'm just trying to hook up these corners and stay in the slipstream. I've still got that slipstream just six tenths behind at this point. And looking back at myself, really trying to be aggressive in this final corner, and I went too aggressive, a massive drift, and just about managed to save it. It was a heart, you know, heart in the mouth situation. I panicked, but managed to keep it on the track, and just about um, held on to my position. Although the really frustrating thing was that I lost that slipstream to Dayro, and you can see how much Dayro was pulling away. He was building the gap up to, um, the drivers behind me and I was hanging on in there with that slipstream but a silly error and now I've got no slipstream in the Mercedes so the Mercedes gonna come under attack obviously on the straights compared to the um, Nissan behind me the Nissan GTR was very strong on this track so I knew that that car down the straights would just pass me and again trying to really be aggressive on the exit there because I wanted to get back into the slipstream in day room I thought I'd just go for it be aggressive push a little bit harder for this part of this, um, the lap not worrying about fuel too much just to see if I can catch back up to that um, Nissan in front of me but unfortunately just not, it was just too far ahead it was about 1.8 seconds ahead I'm doing the best job I can but just not able to really make an impression on the GTR but now I've obviously got to be defensive minded now with TRL approaching me from behind and just got to be cautious there I, I was fairly confident that he wasn't going to throw it up you know Manu, Manu is a very clean driver so kind of know that he's not just going to throw up a random move on the inside so I know that he's going to do it on the straight where he's going to do it and there's no point me fighting it so at this point I thought the chance the best chance for me to get closer to the cars up ahead is to let uh, Manu go so I start short shifting a bit let him go past on this part of the straight so I can try and tuck in before this corner because I didn't want the Renault taking advantage of that so you see me there let him through there and then just tuck straight in behind Manu to avoid the Renault trying to throw it up the inside to this corner so tactical play there just letting um, Manu through I can then pick up his slipstream and try and work my way behind the day road because I need the slipstream of um, that Nissan to make this uh, Mercedes a little bit more competitive down the straights so that's what I'm doing and that's what I'm doing you see there Manu went really aggressive on the apex that corner and I actually cut it a bit he picked up a penalty there and then hit the wall I had a little look on the outside but there was no point me trying to go on the inside I'm just trying to stay on the outside and make him aware that I'm not going to make a move at that point because I wanted him to try and drag me along in this race. You can see also behind me the Renault had another car dive up on the inside of him. Um, I don't know if there was contact there but now you see Manu with that penalty in front of me for cutting the corner on that really tricky corner. It was a corner that you had to be so careful on and 
So far I've not managed to pick up a penalty again in this race. Um, it's a track that I didn't really have any issues with the track limits. Um, probably because I wasn't really being too aggressive on that corner where you could pick them up. But again, just try and have a little look, see if I can just... I can see that Manu seemed to be struggling a little bit this phase. Um, and there's a gap be behind me uh, building. So I was just hoping that he'd um, start getting a little bit smoother. I think that um, little moment where he's picked up that penalty probably frustrated him and it tends to happen if you get a bit frustrated you start driving swiftly but now he's starting to put the power down and you can see he's driving a lot better now so this is helping me because he's dragging me closer to tx3 day you can see just up ahead now that obviously manu's pushing hard i can take advantage of the slipstream i've got out of um, derek's behind me slipstream so everything looking okay at this point in the race i'm 1.2 seconds ahead of derek I've got the ability of Manu's um, car helping me out down the straights, so I'm not under threat in terms of getting out dragged from cars behind. Although I knew Derek was in the VGT, which was an insanely fast car down the straight. You, you just cannot comprehend how fast that car is. Um, you're going to see it later on in this race, but for now I'm safe from Derek you know, in P6 there, and I'm still two places up from where I started, so reasonably happy. Now picking up quite a big slipstream from that GTR, so I decided to go up on the inside and see if I can then push a little bit hard to see if I can catch up TX3 day run. You can see there he's giving me space on the inside, letting me back through and it was kind of the, I wanted to get as close to these drivers up ahead so if we can help each other out with Slipstream it's beneficial for both of us although I'll probably end up holding up um, Manuel on the straights but I was going to let him back pass if he got close enough anyway. So through the corners, I'm reasonably good through there so not holding up Manuel at all and with just 1.9, 2 seconds behind they run up up front and um, still not really you know I've managed to gain a bit of time because I lost quite a big amount of time before as I nearly make a massive error pushing too hard out of that final corner the rear end goes loose just about save it but managed to keep it on the track and still just over two seconds behind there and so managed to gain a bit of time from that um, mistake on lap two going into that final corner um, where I've lost the rear and drifted around that corner. I was probably about three seconds behind the day road and the point. And so I managed to gain a bit of time on him now, 1.9 seconds. And now I'm just trying to push reasonably hard, but make sure I don't use up too much fuel. You know, this is the final lap before we pit. I wanted to make sure that my, you know, the pit strategy when I go in the pits, I've not got a massive amount of um, difference between other drivers. I did expect day to have more. He's been in that slipstream of Pum Pum Q. The whole race is clear what he was doing, just sitting behind, saving fuel. And obviously, the Nissan's a reasonably good car at saving fuel because you can short shift it and it's got really good acceleration when short shifting. Whereas the Mercedes not so strong when it comes to that area. It is a little bit better and uh, improved at that ability since the 1% power increase. But that 1% hasn't given too much. It's it's fractions, you know, it's not a, I think it needed another 1% power increase to make it a little bit more competitive down the straights. As you see, Manu behind me getting very close again. So again. If he was going to make a move, I was going to let him pass, but I think he wanted to use this chance to get rid of his penalty while he's in my slipstream. So I think what you see now is he's just going to pick up that slipstream and then back off once he's getting in it and then just letting the slipstream obviously help him get rid of the penalty. So quite tactical again from him. You're going to see it as we come to the end of the straight. He's breaking early, he's very close to my car. He breaks early there, gets rid of some of his penalty, and it's just all tactical play. You know, there's no point really battling away at this stage on the in-lap to the pits and both of us losing time so clever driving from Manu and that's why I don't I, I, I like drivers who are like that when they're behind you because it gives you a bit more confidence you know you don't expect them to just throw a random move up the inside that could take you out so going through the final final corners here now I did that corner really well you can see I actually built up a bit of a gap there as Manu has really nailed the corner and then going into the final corner I'm gonna go into the pits and obviously the fuel differences let's have a little look as we go in the pits i think i had a little bit less than some of the other drivers but let's have a look i'm on 22 and some a little bit more than some but um obviously tier 3 day run a lot more and some of the other drivers a little bit more you can see i was a few percent down on manu so i decided to under fuel you can have a little look at the diamond i'm pretty sure at this stage i just did it a little bit shorter but yeah quite a big amount short i decided to just risk that because it's better to be in the slipstreams of other cars and as i come out of the pits I had no idea but the steering went weird and I knew that meant that I was probably in a ghost of another car so I decided to back out of that and let the car through and it was actually a TRL manual but this was good and um, obviously the, the, the reason I did that on the fuel was to make sure that I pick up a slipstream of another car further up because if I put in another say second, two seconds, whatever fuel I'd be a group behind and I didn't want that, I wanted to be further as far up the field as possible 
and hope I can just stick with um, Man U. He's probably got a little bit more fuel now to burn for myself. So it's going to be a really hard task to stay with that Nissan, um, especially in the short acceleration zones um, like this point now where he's really getting on the power. I'm trying to get on the power a bit, but I've got a short shift. You see the shifting, the shift lights um, changing gear much before the limiter as I'm just trying to make sure I can bring some of this fuel back now um, in this early phase of the second stint as just up ahead you see there Pum Pum Q in the Citroen obviously driving really well as well in that Citroen and he's within touching distance so in P5 I think I was actually in P6 at this stage because someone hadn't pitted on lap 5 and they decided to do with 6 laps in on the first um, stint so now at this stage I'm in P6 but it's technically P5 obviously Manu there in technically P4 and Pum Pum Q just up ahead in P what is technically P3 so their podium is so close at this stage and it really frustrating because I think if I had not made that mistake at the start and um, been in day run slipstream the whole way around I think I would have had a really good ability to save a good amount of fuel and then come out ahead of Pum Pum Cube with and, you know, even more fuel than what I've got now so really I was kicking myself a little bit at that mistake however I didn't expect this race to be going as good as it is at this stage and um, I'm really happy with the performance of the Mercedes and how I've done so far you know in P P5, what is technically P5, and looking like a good result at this stage. You know, I can't really complain at this. This is um, looking like more solid points for the championship. And at the moment, you know, like I said before, the first five races is all about picking up solid points. I really want to get solid points because then it gives you the freedom to be aggressive and obviously more likely to go for them top 24 races. Then, because if you've got a solid background of like five races. You know, you can risk these big races and you know, if you don't score well in them, then it doesn't matter. You've already got your base points sorted. As you can see there, TRL managing to pull away as I made a little mistake out of turn one. And then on this corner, tried to get on the power too early, ran wide and he just, I lose the slipstream at that point. I was really kicking myself again at another really important mistake. And because of that mistake, that then gave Derek the slipstream of my car. And now I've got no slipstream to the car in front. You can see how aggressive I was driving because I was trying to get rid of that slipstream, but there's not much you can do. The power of that, um, the Golf VGT is just unbelievable. Down the straights, I think it's mainly the power doesn't seem to kick in too much in like second, third, and fourth gear. It seems like the power kicks in in fifth, sixth, and seventh gear. That I'm sorry, yes, fifth and sixth gear. That is where the power really does seem to make a difference as I drive really aggressive through there. And again, you can see the ability of the Mercedes through that corner. It manages to build a little bit of a gap up and go through this corner. You see the different lines again, how he squares the car off slightly different to me. And then watch the speed of this car down the straights. Just this, this car is just insane when it gets to sixth gear. Look how close he's got to me already. And look at the closing speeds once he's in sixth gear. At this point, I just go to the left because I can see there's no point in me defending that on the right hand side. That car is just going too fast and he's got the move made before we're in the braking zone. And that car, I, I just I can only imagine how good that car might be at tracks like um, Le Mans. I'm surprised no one's tried it because I've got a feeling that at Le Mans that car could be so fast. It just keeps accelerating in sixth gear. It's unbelievably fast as you can see now. Just trying to stick with um, Derek. Obviously, I want to try and get back past him. I want to try and get back into P6. Well, what is technically P? Um, yeah, P6. Now we're in P6. Obviously, um, I think it was one of the drivers pitted at the end of lap six to put me back up to P5. So in P6 now, and just trying to hold on to the slipstream. And again, it's kind of beneficial that he's there really because I made that mistake again. So two errors of, that I've made have cost me quite badly in this race so far. However, I've now got the slipstream with Derek to work with. And the main aim now is to try and make sure I can hold the far seat racer. Um, has some really great races so far in this season with him. Um, in the previous race at Dragon Trail, we had a great battle with RC Racer. Now we're at um, this new track and I'm just ahead of him. And I've just got to try and hold on to Derek and see if I can make a move on Derek. If I, if I get a chance, I've got to try and do it. Although I think for the Mercedes to get past Derek, there's got to be a, a mistake from Derek somewhere because that car is just so fast down the straights. I don't think the Mercedes has got enough legs in it. As we go through this right-hand corner, hooking that corner up reasonably well and just look at how fast that uh, Golf is on the power. It just, I can't live with that kind of speed. Even with the slipstream, I'm kind of pulling away from him. And you can see the Evo behind me obviously can't get past me because I'm picking up the slipstream with the car in front. But look how close he's managed to get quite close now to TRR Manu, Manu there up ahead. So this is quite beneficial for me now because 
I'm getting closer to the P3 and 4 by using Derek switching. So everyone is getting quite close at this stage. You know, we're on lap 8 and we've got about 2 seconds, two, 2 to 3 seconds separating P3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And I think also P8 in the distance. In the Renault, yeah, you see just in the distance there, the P8 just out of slipstream of RC Racer coming back into play in this race where he's obviously put a bit more fuel in at the pit stop to drive aggressively. But you can see going in the slipstream, coming into the braking zone, not able to get close enough to Derek in that Golf. The Mercedes just doesn't have the legs. You know, when you compare that to the previous lap when Derek just breezed past the Mercedes, it shows you the difference in power between these cars. Um, obviously, I've put going through that sector though on a purple sector the fastest of the race because obviously picking up the slipstream of Derek has helped me out down the straights massively and built up a little bit of a cushion to RC Racer behind me this has really given me a little bit of help now because I'm not under threat um, in any zones from RC Racer and now I can really see if I can build that I'm managing to get a slipstream here you can see that getting closer getting closer um, but just not enough legs on it that Golf in 6th gear is just too strong I can't really live with the power of that Golf once we get into sixth gear but he's dragging me along nicely here at this stage and we're starting to get closer to TRL uh, Manu and also put Monku there in P3 so everything's going really well just got to try and keep it solid try and keep it on the track and make sure that I just try and stay with um, Derek at this point however I don't know whether Derek's tyres were starting to fade out a little bit it looks like the Golf does suffer a little bit with its tyre wear uh, because see now um, RC Racer starting to get a little bit closer and now this phase Manu's starting to pull away and he misses the apex Derek to that corner so this messes up his um, exit from there and I could see it happening so I got over to the right hand side quickly to give him space so he doesn't hit the barrier and he obviously has to back off to avoid hitting that barrier now 2.3 seconds behind TRR Manu and I've got Derek behind me but am I going to be able to hold him off down the straights I'd have to get an amazing exit from that corner, managed to do that reasonably well and now I need a strong exit from this corner so really trying to chuck it into this corner, down into third gear, try and get on the power nice and then you can see I actually really hooked that up that time, look at the speed I carried through there, that was perfect in the Mercedes, actually got it over four attempts but now watch the Delta just decrease so fast because that Golf, watch it, just look at it in the mirrors approaching me, I could see that coming and again I can't defend it because if I go to the inside, he's just going to breeze around the outside. So I decided to let him through on the inside and then just cut back over to avoid the um, the evolution behind me and get past me. But he makes a little error on the exit of that corner. And that gives me a little run around the outside. We're going side by side at this stage. But again, I cannot go around the outside. The goal's too fast and I have to tuck back in to avoid that um, evolution managing to get past me. So this is great racing again. What a race this has been um, from start to finish all the way through the race battling going on overtakes going on you can see that Renault now getting in on this action we're going into the final lap of the race and this is just really good um, driving clean driving all the way now starting lap 10 and this is the final lap so I really wanted to try and have a little look to see if I get past going up the inside but just can't get the speed you can see I pulled out as soon as I pulled out the golf started pulling away from me again so I couldn't make that move just decided to tuck back in that slipstream because I've got the Evo right behind my gearbox and I need to make sure that I don't lose another position I did not want to lose that position to that um, evolution I wanted to hold on to P6 P6 is a solid result and if I get a chance to make a move on that goal somewhere I might be able to pick up a P5 which would be a great result for the Mercedes at this track um, you know I didn't expect much before going into these races because I hadn't done too much practice and everything's been going really well I've driven well I've driven clean a few scruffy errors which I think I could have got rid of if we would have practiced a bit more but can't complain in this race everything is going sweet everything is going nice and again trying to pick up that slipstream you can see RC Racer behind me getting very close he's gonna have a little look you can see him he's got the slipstream but he knows if he pulls out of my slipstream I've still got the slipstream of the car in front so he cannot make that move into that corner however Derek runs a little bit wider try and have a little look on the inside but just can again can't make a move this is just such good clean driving by everyone and you see RC Racer had a little look up at the inside there but that's compromised his exit he's actually got onto the marbles on the outside and now I've got the slipstream of Derek trying to pick up that slipstream again you can see RC Racer behind me not able to make a move now he's not really got a strong enough slipstream I've got a really good slipstream off Derek you can see him picking it up but look at the difference in speed you know I'm getting I'm revving this car out at this stage and I just cannot make a move he's gone defensive but I can't get close enough so I try and widen the line into the apex Derek just kind of lifts off the throttle on the apex and I couldn't get on the front end up going to the rear of him a little bit there 
I'm just trying to put him on pressure at this stage. It just there's just nothing I can do. Um, try my hardest, and see the Mercedes just hasn't got the power. I try and make sure I keep this um, last few corners clean and tidy because I don't want to lose out on the position behind. And you see Derek there pushing the limits really um, far there. Dim obviously doesn't want to lose position also. And going on to the final stretch of track, you can see Pomponku getting rid of his penalty, and I think another driver getting rid of his as we go over the line in P6. So can't complain at that. Um, a great race, battling all the way through the race. Some stupid mistakes by myself there to make, you know, lose a little bit of time. I think I, I without the mistake at the start, I would have been able to hold on to Day Run Slipstream and maybe finish P3 in the end. But can't complain. P6, more solid points. We're going to have a little look at this start, you see, from the start on the highlights. Great start by myself. You see, Tiara Manu struggling with the traction on that Nissan and also. The RS01 struggling with traction, and I put myself straight up into P5. You can see the Oscar driver going down the inside. Little touch to Dayron, and um, Dayron just about holds onto that. And then I think this is the corner where the um, Oscar driver up ahead has a little look on Pom Pom Q there. Decides to try and throw one up the inside, and it looks like that's going to end in disaster. There's contact made, and um, Pom Pom Q holds his line on the outside, which he's entitled to, and then he spins in that. I think he should have just held back from Pom Pom Q and just kept his position he would have still been in p3 then but it gives me another position in the race and then i was up to p4 so a solid start for myself in that race straight up to p4 from the start and i was really happy with that i couldn't complain at that so next one we go through the drift that really did lose me the chance you know i was, I was about six attempts behind at this stage picking up the slipstream of them they were trying to take a lot of speed for that corner just ran inches wide and just look how much time that lost me i managed to hold the drift reasonably well but I had no acceleration going down the straight, which then gave TRR Manu my slipstream. But this was my move on TRR Manu when I obviously had the slipstream and was able to make a move. I think he was actually probably fuel saving at this stage. I don't really know, but I actually had enough speed to get past um, the Nissan, but just couldn't do that to Derek and the VGT. The VGT was just too fast. But then obviously we come through to the pit stop phase. When I come out the pits and I could feel steering was weird, and this was why I was inside. Um, TRL's car there both I could I realized straight away that's what had happened because it felt weird so I decided to just lift and let him go and then pick up the slipstream so then we move to the insane speed of that VGT just check this out from this angle and you're going to see the closing you know the distance how fast it closes in um, I don't know whether he was driving flat out but you can just see the look at the speed of that thing it just you can't defend against that um, in the Mercedes so the, I just held my line there was no point in me going defensive just let him have that and um try and see if I can make a pass on him somewhere else and this is where I did manage to get back past him because he made an error he didn't hook up the apex of this corner look how much missed the apex by a few feet and then that cost him getting on the power and I seen it happening so pulled over to the right and managed to get that position back so it was up to P4 I think it was there but then straight away after that the power of that VGT again cleans the pass like it just looks like I'm not even moving it's just so fast that golf and um, I really think I'm going to try that car at Le Mans just next time I see that race on in group three because I have a feeling that car is going to be a lot stronger than what PR. I don't think I've seen it being used before in the Le Mans daily races but it's clearly a good car anyway I hope you enjoyed that race I picked up 2,000 points in that race which puts me now into P14 in the championship so as you can see there into P14 over on P1 in the manufacturer so P1 for Mercedes and P14 in Europe so so far everything is going really well in the Mercedes I'm happy with that you know I'm in the top 20 and I can't complain at how this season's going so far I could have picked up more points in that race but I'm not going to complain at points like that 2,000 points is solid and as long as I can keep this going for um, three more rounds pick up the base points done for the season then we can start getting a lot more aggressive with races and try different things and just hope that one, something pays off for a big result anyway I hope you enjoyed that video I'm going to be back with more content very soon. I'm trying to get, going to try and get a track guide out for the go-kart track. I've done an okay lap in that. I'm probably not going to do Dragon Trail because I've already got a guide for that. On I know it's on the older tyre model, but I think the basics are there with the track guide I've done. I don't think going into any more detail and doing the exact same guide again, it, it just doesn't seem to be that beneficial because the braking points are identical. It's just that you don't carry as much speed through the corner now. Um, so... If you want to check that guide out, make sure you have a look in the track guide section of my playlist and you will find the Dragon Trail one there. I think driving the SLS as well um, for that from the previous season. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and click that notification button so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks again for watching everyone.